Where do geckos go shopping? At retail stores. Because they can lose their tails and regrow them. So retail, retail. We're going to be drawing a gecko today. So come and join me. Let's get started. Hi, guys. So for today's gecko, we're going to use a black marker, a pink marker, and a green marker. So the first thing I'm going to do for my gecko is um, his eyes. So I'm going to do that kind of style of eye that I've been doing where it kind of looks like a moon. Doesn't go quite all the way around. Black marker. And I'll do another one just over here. Yeah, and um, and now I've got my eyes. The next thing I'm going to do is my gecko's head. So the the gecko is actually going to be like a gecko would be on a glass door. So its head is pointing up. So I'm going to take my marker, do a line here, just like that. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is add my gecko's tongue. We'll explain how awesome gecko's tongues are later, but right now, the tongue comes out like this, and maybe just a little inside of the tongue there. <laughs> so the next shape I'm going to draw is from the head just behind the eye here. Comes out like this, and down. Then we'll do a kind of a matching shape on the other side. Out, and down. So we've got our gecko's head. It's just kind of upside down. <laughs> now we're gonna do the body and the arms. So here we're gonna reach across and start our arms and our hands. So geckos have these super cool finger fingers that have kind of like a, a Velcro substance on them. Uh, they've got these tiny little hairs on the ends of their fingers that help them hold on to any surface. So what I'm going to do is kind of do like a, a finger would be on a person, but on the end it comes out a little bit further. Okay, and they have five on each of their hands. Yeah, geckos can actually stick to pretty much any surface except Teflon, which is what a lot of um, pots and pans have on them to keep food from sticking to it. They are no match for Teflon. <laughs> so now we're going to come back down the arm, just like this. Awesome. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Gonna come out from the body a little bit. And the arm is going to come up over here. And we'll do some of our fingers. One. Have you guys ever had a pet gecko or seen uh, geckos in real life? There are so many different types. There's over a thousand different um, variations of geckos out there. And some of them are, they're all different colors. Some are green, some are yellow with spots, some are pink, and a lot of them are camouflaged with their environment. So we're going to come down just the arm like that. Perfect! Now we'll move on to our gecko's body. Now geckos kind of twist their body a bit while they're climbing. So we're gonna have his body come out this way a bit. 
We'll do the same thing over here. A little twisted. And we'll go on to his legs. So his leg is bent a little bit this way. We're gonna come down and do the same kind of um, the same type of toes as his fingers with the little round part on the end. Okay. <laughs> now geckos love fruit and insects and pollen and um, from flowers. That's the main things they eat. And they can live, wait, one, two, three, we need one more. They can live between 10 and 20 years. These are super cool. Okay, now we're gonna come down the leg. Comes out like this. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. So this leg is bent as well. And we'll add our five little toes. <laughs> and they don't have to be perfect at all. Some of mine are different lengths. <laughs> but from the pictures that I've seen of geckos, that's pretty common. One, two, three, four. And the last one, five. Awesome. So we're going to come up, and now the leg, and from this leg, we're going to do our tail. Now the gecko's tail is one of its coolest parts, because geckos have this ability to lose their tail and regrow a new tail. How cool is that? So if a predator is kind of after them, they can um, remove their tail, kind of like on a little dotted line, <laughs> and uh, the tail keeps twitching a little bit, and it kind of spooks the predators out a bit, and these guys can get away. So God gave them a lot of cool defenses um, to keep away from their uh, predators. So. Now we've done the outline of our gecko. Next thing I'm going to do is add some color. Okay. So geckos have tons of different patterns you can find on them. Some of them look like cheetahs or zebra prints or um, some seem to have little shapes on them. So I'm going to do a couple little shapes on my gecko here. I might as well start with the tongue. So these geckos have pink tongues, and their tongue is super important because geckos don't have eyelids. They need to use their tongue to clean their eyes. That seems pretty weird, doesn't it? <laughs> but it can reach over and clean their eyes. Okay, now for the pattern that I'm gonna put on this little gecko, I'm gonna call this gecko Grady. Grady the gecko. So Grady, I'm kind of doing some different shapes on Grady. There are pattern. Come down this way. And you guys can come up with whatever pattern or spots you want on your gecko, because like I said, they come in almost every variety. They also there are some geckos that blend into their environment so well that their tails actually look like leaves and even their hands their, um, look like leaves as well. So it's very hard to tell where the gecko is. Great camouflage. Now those tails are important. They wouldn't want to lose them if they didn't have to because geckos can store food and 
um, nutrients and stuff in their tails so when they don't have when they don't have a lot of access to food they will stay healthy and strong without that tail they are likely to be more weak and their body is going to spend time um, and energy regenerating a tail okay that's my little gecko pattern <laughs> So I'm done with my pink. I'm gonna move on to my green. So when I was learning about geckos, um, I learned that they communicate with each other by making a bunch of weird noises. <laughs> some some people say they sound like chirps, like um, like birds, and some people think they sound like crickets. And a lot of people think they sound like dogs. They make barking noises. So, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, some, because there are over a thousand different types of geckos out there, there's even some geckos that are, like, the smallest version is less than two centimeters in length. So, like a full-grown gecko, but it's only two centimeters big. It's kind of cool. They can be found in every um, continent except Antarctica. And uh, they generally like warm places, but they've adapted so that you can find them in cool areas too. They are nocturnal, which is cool, and uh, their eyes are super, super sensitive to light and color. So they've studied geckos and they've found that geckos' eyes are 350 times more sensitive to light than people. That means that um, they don't need much light for their activities. And being nocturnal, they can see very well in the dark. And uh, they have a full range of color in the dark, whereas like people are kind of colorblind in the dark. We, we can't make out a lot of colors and stuff when it's dark out. And uh, that's not a problem for geckos. Their world is really colorful, even though they're mainly only out at night. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> so we kind of talked about that them being able to stick um, almost anywhere and that's one of the cool things about geckos is they can crawl across your ceiling, <laughs> although that would scare me, uh, walls, glass windows, uh, doors, anything. Because of that awesome um, kind of Velcro-like little hairs on their hands and feet. Grady, you're looking awesome. I like your green. <laughs> this is one bright gecko. I'm not exactly sure where Grady would be camouflaged. Maybe in the rainforest or somewhere tropical with flowers. And pink and green setting. <laughs> now, have you guys ever been somewhere on vacation and seen little geckos um, roaming around? You know, they used to scare me so much. I had one, I opened, I was in Mexico and uh, I opened a napkin, like a cloth napkin inside a restaurant 
and out walked a gecko. And I screamed as loud as I could because I couldn't believe that it would be in the restaurant and in my napkin and across the table. And I must have scared this poor gecko half to death because he ran faster than I've ever seen any animal move <laughs> to get away from me. <laughs> but I think he liked the warm laundry and that's where he ended up. <laughs> okay. Here we go. All right. Well, that has that is it for Grady. I hope you guys had fun and I'd love to see your geckos. Have a great week. See you next time. Bye.